Dear friends, welcome in this eighth video about wilderness. And this uh, episode we are going to talk about the chi and wilderness. And this is an important topic of course because a lot of people talk about chi all the time. And in this episode we're going to clarify a little bit more about chi, what it actually is and where it comes from and how it relates uh, within the Taoist uh, world vision and Chinese medicine to wilderness as a whole, but also then in that sense what it uh, means to us. As you can see, I've changed my background a little bit. This is one of my paintings. I used to be a painter in the past and people always ask me like, can you please show us some more paintings? I am especially not going to sit in the middle of the painting because then look, I am giving a <laughs> wrong signal and I don't want to do that also. Um, this is uh, based on the idea of the yin yang as uh, the mountain and the valley, uh, which is an important theme in Taoism, of course. And uh, these are different variations of this uh, based on the meditation experiences I had in the past and uh, of course still frequency go frequently go through. In the pre previous episodes we talked about wilderness as something uh, influence us as uh, humans and uh, what is our possible place in this wilderness uh, in the sense that uh, we discussed that wilderness actually is a sort of a patterned existence uh, which is a uh, altruist and cooperative in its nature and as a result of that placement anytime when you bring in something new in that system there is going to be competition and eventually in its entropic state it is going to be competitive non-competitive but cooperative and uh, therefore the altruistic nature in a social group when there's something new happening like for instance in afghanistan you first have uh, a lot of competition going on and eventually things will settle people will start cooperating with each other because they have to and then eventually a sort of uh, potentially peaceful coexistence will exist and eventually maybe altruism will be found between the people and then you have peace of course um, altruism is not something broadly recognized in the world uh, broadly we see altruism as something that only holy people have but altruism is something that is just plain basic natural and that is a very important part of uh, the Taoist uh, way of thinking uh, because it seeks this kind of stage of existence where uh, people can be altruist where nature's altruism can be experienced and as a result that everybody can benefit and nobody has to suffer. What we're going to talk about today is the inner and the outer relationship uh, between us and wilderness today. Uh, of course, we talked before about how wilderness is influencing us. In this episode, we will talk about how we are actually in that wilderness ourselves. And there are different options in that, but it has to do with our understanding of uh, the main structure of wilderness, which is uh, called uh, the tripartition. Uh, ID or tripartition theory of uh, Taoism and Confucianism follows the same rule basically where we divide the world in uh, heavenly spheres in the earthly sphere and we are living in between we mentioned it in one of the earlier videos but uh, today we're going to go a little bit deeper into that and then specifically in relationship to the Ling body uh, which uh, provides us with the uh, Ling Qi and Ling Qi is what they talk about in uh, Reiki uh, the Japanese uh, version of uh, uh, well, Ling Chi, <laughs> that's basically it. And um, we are going to see that into a larger context and we can learn to accept a little bit more about why in Taoism they say we are too much in a hurry and we miss therefore the point in our modern spirituality and things take time to develop um, and it will be very clear. And for this we have to ask ourselves a few questions. Let's make another detail very clear. And that is that when we are in the West and we talk about inside ourselves, we usually talk about inside our outer form, our inside our body. So that means our heart, our lungs and so on and so on. These are inside our body, our thoughts are inside our body and so on and so on. 
in Taoism that is not exactly the case. Uh, like for instance, if you see a tree, then a tree is of course the expansion of its lungs on the outside where the leaves and the branches go and where all the different kinds of creatures live and an underground uh, in the earth there is basically its brain which is expanding into the earth and uh, is uh, moving the tree very slowly into more beneficial directions to have a long and healthy and happy life. Uh, lots of creatures live atop and a lot of creatures live below and in its branch and its uh, stem and so on and so on. But the creature itself actually has sort of like a magnetic field you can say and this magnetic field is basically uh, its consciousness and it's not really magnetic but uh, in effect uh, you can uh, you could uh, probably measure uh, magnetic lines like with a magnetic thing and with our body is exactly the same because we are partly electrical beings we also radiate a particular kind of magnetism and it's a very weak kind of mechanism uh, likewise and if we have a very weak kind of electricity inside our body and like in nature everything of course is very weak uh, many people confuse this part with the chi and this is uh, where, where it goes into two different kind of directions uh, yes there is magnetism yes there is electricity uh, yes that has a particular kind of consequences and can be used and is used in some kinds of qigong which are developed on the basis of western knowledge not on the basis of chinese knowledge you have to understand the kind of qigong that use healing and that they use magnetism and they use electricity and so on these are based on western assumptions that came there through hong kong and through the european colonies into china during the 18th and the 19th century there is a very interesting book i will mention in the bottom uh, that you can read about it uh, from hong kong university somebody who did the research in that not very widely known but it's definitely worth reading it uh, because uh, it shows the relativity of uh, cultural isolation um, that's a completely different kind of topic let's go to the next part we just talked about the outer and the inner and we talked also about uh, the body as in the western view which is then of course uh, the uh, basically the boundaries of ourselves in uh, Chinese culture and Taoist culture specifically the self is in that sense is expanded through our personal reach so how far we can reach into the world this is basically our self so our self when we know a lot of people when we are uh, in contact with a lot of people and we really know these people not just that we are like a movie star and we have like a huge ego because there's a lot of people who know us that is not the same right it is about who we know how we reach out into the world who we investigated what we investigated how we are in relationship with life and that defines ourselves and that is our heavenly aspect and at the moment when you look inside our body which of course is there that is our earthly aspect heaven begins basically at the lowest layer in our skin so for Taoism, Chinese medicine, a skin is the beginning of heaven and heaven then is there, our heaven. Yeah, so our self in that sense takes place uh, within the intersections between us and other people. That means also at the same time that uh, we can say that the yin is our self on the inside, our body and our, its content and the yang is our self and the outside and the world around us. And that is of course very interesting to see because at the moment when you look at your place in the world you can see that if your uh, expansion goes too fast uh, you turn your young into fire and as a result that you burn yourself up like what you see with many uh, populist politicians or what you see with uh, pop stars they start using drugs to keep up with the popularity that they have uh, they start uh, creating all kinds of spectacular posts on the internet to make sure that people see them and they get more scores and they get more money uh, on the stock market. They uh, invest in uh, uh, sources uh, that are going to be profitable when other people suffer and so on. Uh, these kind of things, these are the expansion of young and that young then turns into a fire and can become detrimental to the world as a whole. Uh, of course, it can make you rich but it also can destroy the lives of other people. And, and the moment when the, uh, the self-reach is uh, too little, that means that because of your timidity or whatever kind of reason you self-isolate, you, maybe you're too radical and you don't really want to talk with anybody or you are not allowed to talk with uh, other people, like because when you're a woman and you're not allowed to reach out to the world and 
you know, connect through education or through socializing and so on and so on. Um, that happens still in some parts of the world, crazy enough that there are still people who can have that kind of thought. Uh, and at that moment, your chi is low and it means your reach into the world is also very low. That means that chi is not uh, anything personal per se, but it is an effect of your outreach into the world. And at the moment, when you are stabilizing yourself, your chum chi, your true chi, into the world by uh, representing yourself properly um, and uh, getting to know people, then uh, that works very well. So you see, and for instance, in my, in my case, uh, I reach out into the world through these posts that can make me very popular uh, at this moment. It doesn't really happen, uh, but that doesn't really matter. It is uh, widely seen, uh, but not so much, uh, 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 how do you say, connected with at this point. It is something that we make these movies for, to help people connect with the ID and understand more about their Chinese medicine and about their Kung Fu and about their Taoism. While uh, at the same time, I compensate that part with uh, things like therapeutic work and uh, all kind of other social contacts that I maintain with other people as my students or as my friends or whatever. And as a result of that, I make sure that the inner and the outer and the reach of my personality is uh, stabilized uh, to make sure that I do not uh, become, uh, how do you say, caught up. That is the right word in too rapid expansion at a certain point. That is for everybody, of course, a very important part. Then at the moment when we are talking about our outreach and we are interacting with the world and we do this in a useful way, uh, this is in the I Ching, it's hexagram number 63. Um, that is the sun underneath the water, so the heat is heating up the water, like in a steam engine, and uh, that is uh, useful, so therefore we produce a qi. At the moment when we are not in communicado with the world around us, then that is not so useful. Hexagram number 64. And uh, this hexagram uh, is an uh, indication of the fire being above and the water being below. Of course, there is some warming taking place, but you know, it's like with the sun and the sea, it takes a long time. But that, in that case, uh, we can say, okay, if the, the sun under the water is a chi, then at that moment, the sun above the water is a xia. That it means it is uh, evil in uh, Taoism. And that is also what is happening inside your body when two parts are not in communicado, that is a xia. When there is uh, things in communication, that is a qi. So if the heart is pumping and it's doing its job right, so it is in communicado, then you have a heart qi, right? If it is not the case, then there is a xia of the heart. That means that at that moment, you have a disease of the, of the heart and the heart is being affected. We will talk about Xia in another way in, uh, when we talk about morality in a later stage uh, as part of Chinese medicine. But uh, that is uh, uh, another part and we could talk about that uh, later. One thing that is very important is that when we talk about uh, the interaction between heaven and earth, uh, you see that the Qi of heaven works in straight lines. So Qi never goes in a zigzag or something like this, but the Qi of heaven always goes in a straight line and the chi expands in all directions at the same time. So the expansion of heaven is linear and it means that the chi of heaven that comes down to us on earth is in a straight line. And at the moment when it enters our body, like what we learned to experience in the UNC meditation, also for free available in our channel. So uh, look at the link uh, for these free classes. At the moment when you see the UNC uh, the heavenly chi coming inside your body, you see that it is a straight line and because of this straight line um, it actually uh, diffracts at the moment when it comes to a barrier. So the heavenly chi is very fragile and when it bounces into something it just diffracts and it disappears. There's no more heaven chi. So for instance if you say like okay I have the heaven chi of the heavenly energy coming through my body and as a result that I can do healings like that do with Reiki, that means they don't really understand the Ling Chi principle and they don't understand really the heavenly principle because it only comes in a straight line. At the moment when you can take it, you can take it, if you can take it and you can manage it and at that moment move it into another direction or make something else out of it, it becomes you personal. That means it's your personal Chi. So when you do a healing, it is always your personal Chi that you give and as a result of that it will exhaust you and at the moment when it does exhaust you, it will make you sick and you will attract also the xia of other people. As a result of that, you change their karma and you also change your karma. Their karma will be better because their life will become easier unless when they keep on making the same mistakes, which is very likely, or 
uh, your and anyway your karma will become worse because you take their karma on your karma you don't know where it comes from so it is like an abstract problem that is inside you it will harm you in the long run and that is why you see that many healers on the long term they die either early or they get all kind of strange diseases and um, well almost all the healers that I know are not very healthy in their habits or in their uh, life periods. I've been a healer myself, I've done that kind of work and I've seen the negative effects and then you can say like, well, maybe you're not good enough healer. Yeah, that is true, no healer is good enough. Uh, that is very basically it. Healers also become a little bit spooky as a result of that and people got strange ideas from healers. They see them as a divine creature or they see them as a witch or anything like that. And in all cases that is negative for the healer because the healer becomes isolated and as a result that is chi diminishes. So that means that the, the, biz, the business or the work of being a healer in that sense also gradually diminishes the healer uh, at the same time. When we talk about heaven and earth, we can say from both they have uh, chi. And this chi is originating in the yang of earth and the yang of heaven. Uh, of course, yes, the earth is yin because it is contracting, but the activity of the earth itself is, uh, is, uh, is, uh, is uh, yang. When the heaven chi comes into the earth, it is being absorbed inside the earth, like what we do in the yuan chi practice. And then at that moment, because our cells being body also and the earth also being body, and at that moment the earth chi, the heavenly chi is being absorbed and from there are made the earthly forms. And the earthly forms in that sense are the different kind of things that you can say, oh, okay, it's a tree, it's a bird, it's a dog, it's a woman, it is a man. Yes, so all these kind of things, these are being created simply because of the way how, um, well, uh, heaven enters into the earth. And that means that the young of earth and the young of heaven, they both actually do things. The heavenly chi expands and the earthly chi grows, basically. And the generation of the things that it grows, like me or like you, uh, we have particular kind of activities. If our life is pretty much useless, we are not representing earth properly. And as a result of that, our chi is going to be weak. And at the moment when we represent nature uh, better, then automatically our chi becomes uh, strong. Strong, weak does not mean that you're going to be all famous or successful or anything like that. It just means that you are strong. Like I knew this one uh, woman, she had a very strong chi. Nobody really liked her because this chi was way too strong. And as a result of the strong chi, um, people try to avoid her. So uh, as a professional, she was basically unemployed because uh, nobody liked her because of the, because of the because of the, the strong chi. She was too strong. A lot of more things that I can talk about that. I hope anyway that you like this video and at the moment when you like this video, I hope you're also going to support us. It's not that I'm going to back you for that because these videos are for free, it's a service. But of course, the more uh, support we have, even if it's just through a like or through a mem uh, membership subscription on YouTube, which is for free, uh, or through a financial subscription on our Patreon, or through participation in our app, uh, where you can, uh, how do you say that, uh, um, exercise uh, in all kinds of systems to help you get to that point, uh, that will be really great. Uh, because that means our community will grow, more people will become enrolled in these kind of practices and then it can become more norm because that's basically what you want. Okay, uh, I look forward to see you in the next video. We are going to go through all the topics that are relevant for Chinese and Taoist medicine over time. If you have any questions, contact me, uh, ask them. There is every Friday, there is a Q&A session I'm going to try to get these on multiple channels the coming time uh, to make sure that uh, you can find me more easy and also can find these videos more easy as a result. So I look forward to see you and uh, help me reach a wide organic reach by spreading these videos.